What's up, it's Susie, and today I'm talking you through Steak Cuts 101. Now I know when you walk up to the butcher counter at the grocery store, it can feel a little bit overwhelming when you see a massive assortment of meats like this. I'm gonna tell you which steaks are best for grilling, which ones are really good for slicing, which ones are gonna work well if you wanna use your smoker, and some of my favorite, you know, slightly obscure cuts that you can pick up for a great price. So let's do it. First up, let's talk about what you're gonna see on the labels. Now, conventional raised US beef is gonna be graded on a criteria that tells you how much fat is in the meat itself. So prime grade beef is kind of the highest level you'll be able to buy in just a regular grocery store that has the highest fat content, the most fat marbling. Then you have choice, which usually comes in at a medium price range, and then select. The grade of your meat does actually change the price of the meat because the higher the fat content, the higher the price, the more flavor, usually the better texture that you'll get in that piece of steak. So if it's a special occasion and you want a really nice cut of beef, you're probably gonna spring for something labeled prime because you really want that fat and that flavor. Most everyday steaks, Choice is fantastic, and if you're on a budget, you can look for select grade beef. Just know that fat equals flavor, so the higher the grade, the more flavor, and that's why it costs more. There are also a few other varieties that your grocer or your butcher could offer that kind of exists outside of that traditional prime choice select framework. That is grass-fed. Grass-fed doesn't necessarily have to fall under the same grading criteria that conventionally raised beef does, so you could have a grass-fed steak that is really well marbled, or you could have it that's really lean. Typically, grass-fed beef is pretty lean, so keep that in mind. Some butchers and grocery stores even go a little bit above and beyond, and they dry age or wet age their beef in store. Now, aging beef is a process that means your beef is sitting at a specific temperature and humidity point for an extended period of time. It starts to break down the meat, it becomes more tender and develops a specific flavor. Because this process takes a while, you'll likely be charged extra for that at the grocery store, and this is kind of a bougier option. The last thing that I wanna to touch on is varieties of the cattle themselves. So a specific species of cattle will be marketed. So if you see Angus beef or if you see Wagyu, uh, these are things that fall outside of that conventional grading structure that can have different effects on the flavor and the fat marbling of the meat itself. All that to say, the grading structure exists it helps, but at the end of the day, your eyeballs are really your best friend when it comes to picking a steak that's full of flavor. For example, these steaks right here are labeled choice, but you can see they have a massive amount of fat marbling inside of them. As opposed to this guy who is also choice but doesn't have as much fat marbling. Now this comes down to the cut as well, but you can see that the grade doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna have the same amount of fat in every piece of steak. So knowing the right cuts is crucial to making sure you get the final texture and flavor profile that you want, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. When it comes to grading cattle to meet these criteria, they take one small sample from the rib portion of the cow, and that's how they grade the entire carcass. So no matter what the cut is, it's all determined based on that one piece. So like I said, these are both graded choice. However, this is a particularly well marbled cut. This one, not necessarily so. And yes, it's due to the cut, but it's also due to the cow. I've got all of my steak cuts unwrapped and divided into a couple categories. Over here, we have the grilling steaks. These are the ones that you season simply, grill beautifully, and you can eat them with a fork and a knife. Super fabulous, usually one portion per steak. Over here, I've got what I call like the family steaks. These are ones that do really well with a marinade because they tend to be a little bit more lean, uh, a little bit more tough. A marinade makes these really flavorful, really tender, also great for grilling, but these are generally ones that you slice into small portions and serve family style. And then I have a couple of steaks here in the middle that are kind of my obscure steaks. They're not traditionally what you would see from a steakhouse necessarily, and they're not family style. They're individually portioned steaks, but they have a ton of flavor and are usually a great bang for your buck because they're not conventional. Let's kick things off over here with our classic steak selection. These are what I call the steakhouse cuts. These are what you'll typically see on a steakhouse menu. We've got the sirloin, which tends to be leaner, a little bit tougher, not as much flavor, usually the cheapest. 
Next is the New York Strip. This is a great grilling steak, beautiful, seasoned lightly, cooked to medium rare. It has great texture, but it's not tough. The filet is probably one you're really familiar with, the filet mignon or the tenderloin filet. It's really tender, it melts in your mouth, but it is pretty lean, so if you like something with a little more fat, you gotta go with my favorite, the ribeye, what I consider the king of steaks. It's well marbled, has a ton of flavor, beautiful on the grill. It doesn't need a lot in terms of seasoning and it's fantastic cooked to a medium rare. Now if you're really feeling super fancy, you've probably seen something like this, either a T-bone or a porterhouse. This is actually not its own steak, it's two steaks put together. So this is the tenderloin on one side and the New York strip on the other and that makes up the T-bone or the porterhouse. The T-bone is typically the smaller end, so you'll have a very small portion of a filet. This is a porterhouse where you have a really large portion of the filet. I think this is a two-person steak. Next up are what I call the family style steaks. These are the ones that are really great in marinades. Uh, they tend to be lean, they tend to be a little bit tough, so a marinade helps infuse them in flavor and break down some of that tight, tough texture. These are things like top round, top sirloin, skirt steaks, flank steaks. They're great grilled, hot and fast, medium rare, and sliced against the grain. These are great ones when I'm cooking for my family because I can buy just one steak, slice it up, and have a bunch of different options for everybody to enjoy. Finally, let's talk about some of these like off the wall cuts. These are ones that you're not gonna see in the center rack of your butcher counter. You'll usually find them up above these kind of steakhouse cuts in the middle. They tend to be more affordable. These are steaks like the flat iron steak, which works kind of as a family steak um, instead of a personal steak, but it's a little bit more obscure. It has really fantastic fat and marbling and texture and flavor at a really affordable price per pound. I have a great recipe on my website for a flat iron steak with chimichurri that's absolutely delicious. Next up is the Denver steak. Now this one is beautiful seasoned with salt and pepper sliced thin. Um, this works as an individual steak cooked to medium rare, but there aren't a lot of these per cow, so you're not gonna see them sliced and served as conventionally as these guys, but when you can find them, grab one. It's so delicious. The fat and flavor in here is fantastic. And last up is a tri-tip steak. Now you're probably familiar with tri-tip roasts, but a lot of butchers are now cutting these into individual steaks. If you can find them, pick one up and try it out. This was actually one of our most affordable cuts per pound out of the entire steak category, even cheaper than the sirloin. And look at that marbling. The flavor on these is fantastic. Again, grilled to a medium rare. They're absolutely beautiful eating steaks. Now, I know there's no way for me in one YouTube video to take you through every single steak at your grocery store or butcher counter, but I think this is a good introduction to what you'll typically see in terms of the steakhouse steaks, the family steaks, and some off-the-wall cuts that you can look for. If you want recipes for any of these, make sure you check out heygrillhay.com or download the app. I have recipes for all of these different steaks on there with instructions for marinades or cooking methods that'll help you make the perfect steak at home, even if it's your first time. If you wanna go even more in depth and actually come with me to the grocery store and look at the meat counter and make your different meat selections and learn a lot more in depth about different cuts of steak, check out the Grill Squad. It's kind of my version of Patreon. It's an online exclusive community and barbecue school where I teach you everything that you need to know. And I have two videos, one fully on steak cuts and another one on meat buying so you can be a more educated, better consumer at the grocery store. You can check that out at thegrillsquad.com. I'd love to have you join us. Now you have to let me know in the comment section below what your very favorite steak cut is, and we can chat down there. We'll see you guys soon.